Hey friends, it is Jason the Bird Nerd Sansove back with another activity out here on the prairie at Spring Creek Prairie. This one is going to be all about the prairie and the plants and a really cool new word called biodiversity. Okay, right there. So this is our prairie biodiversity activity. Let's start with our supplies like we do with all of our activities. We need you, your senses, right? Paper and pencil if you've got them. And then some other optional things if you have them available, right? Maybe a net to catch some bugs in, some bags to put them in, maybe a viewer. I've got this cool um, one here or a magnifying glass or even a little jar like this if you've got it. A empty peanut butter jar works really great too, okay? And if you've got it, maybe a plant or bug ID guide, okay? You can also look that stuff up online with your parents if you want, okay? Our vocab words are invertebrate, biodiversity, insect, right some really good ones so let's pause right there and if you get a chance maybe look invertebrate up right now and see what that is and we're back so let's talk about invertebrate that's all kinds of animals without a what no spine right they've got no backbone there's lots of them things like spiders and ants right those love to live on the prairie because there's so many plants so when we're doing our biodiversity activity, we're gonna look at how many plants we can find and how many types of bugs or other invertebrates might live on or in or under those plants here on the prairie, okay? I've got some questions we'll get to later, but let's start with our activity. The first one is really easy. If you are looking right here on the prairie, or if you're able to look from your window or get out in your backyard, just try to count with your pencil and paper how many kinds of plants, different kinds, can you find in 10 seconds? So let's just take 10 seconds and look around and I'm gonna count and see how many I find right here. And that's 10, that was fast. How many did you guys find? I found 12 in just 10 seconds. So that's a pretty good number. That means there's lots of things for bugs and animals to eat and to live on or in, which is really cool. Now let's take a closer look. Some things you might also want that I didn't mention earlier are maybe a measuring tape to see if you've got really tall, tall grass prairie plants like we have here, or maybe it's all really small plants, kind of like this one that's just coming up here. Something else to look for and maybe draw or write down is, is the plant growing in green already this spring? Like you can see a lot of the green grass coming up here. We've got this cool plant and plant there, right? Or is it a plant from last year that already seeded? Like this milkweed pod or all of this big blue stem, a really important prairie grass. And just because this is not alive right now, doesn't mean the plant isn't. That's a really cool thing to look up, right? It's still alive down there in the root system and it's just going to grow this part so that it can live all summer, but it's going to do that later in the year. So let's pause again and if you get a chance, look up the native Nebraska grasses like big blue stem and little blue stem and learn more about them. All right, we're back. Hopefully you learned some really cool things about our state grass, which is the little blue stem, and my favorite, the big, tall, big blue stem, okay? We're also gonna look for what lives in them. Something really fun you can do is as simple as if you have a net, run your net through it and see if any bugs are there, or if you don't have a net, you don't need it. Just dig down in there. All of this dead grass from last year is called thatch. That's another good vocab word. And you can just dig, and sometimes, the animals might be down in there trying to stay warm when it's not super hot out yet. You might find ants, roly polies, and you've got from the woodland activity, if you've done that one already, you've got decomposition happening. Oh, and sprouts. See, you've got some green sprouts in there for this spring already. Very cool. So that's a really simple activity you can do too. And make sure to chart what you find, right? Write it down, or if you don't like to write some of the words, just draw it. See if you can draw the bug or the plant that you saw when you dug down in the grass, okay? Last couple of things is do a little scavenger hunt. If you have more space in your yard or if the park is closed and you can still go out there, maybe do a scavenger hunt for a couple of cool things. I'll go on a short walk and see what we can find. 
One thing I want to look for is this. This is one of my favorite things to find in the grassland. This is a crazy thing called a gall. G-A-L-L. -L. What that is, is in the middle of a stem, a cool little wasp or fly stung it and laid an egg in there. So there's a baby larva animal living right in there. One of those invertebrates, right? The larva of it is inside there. And it lives on the plant but doesn't kill it. Sometimes the woodpeckers find out that there's a bug in there. And so if there's already a hole, they might have already eaten it. If you want with your parents, they can get a knife and carefully uh, cut that open and see if you can find the little bug inside. We'll see if we can find more of those. Something else to find in a grassland is not just invertebrates live there, sometimes bigger animals. There's signs of them right here. We've got two animals that were out here. Looks like the rabbit was out here. And maybe later on, somebody was smelling the rabbit and maybe the coyote was coming around. Or maybe that's raccoon. I see lots of corn in there too. So it's hard to tell. Very cool. Let's see what else we can find. Remember from our intro way back when, why the tall grass is named the tall grass prairie, right? Look at this big blue stem. It's almost taller than I am. Some of it gets six, seven, eight foot tall, right? Indian grass and big blue stem, some of our tallest ones around. It's a great place to hide if you're a coyote, a bobcat, or a deer, right? else really cool to look at when you're looking at biodiversity. We've seen so many types of plants. Look for types of bugs. But something else that helps those plants grow, don't forget to look at seeds. You can find seed heads from last year that might still have some seeds. So I've got some rye here that might still have some seeds there. You can look through those. It looks like I might have last year's sunflower here. And let's see if there's any seeds left. I'll rub it against my hand. Oh, it looks like the birds probably ate them all already. But a lot of times you can find a super tiny sunflower seed still in there. So that's another fun thing to look for out in the area. All right, we're gonna make a quick circle and head back to our chart and wrap up. There are a couple more signs of biodiversity out here. There's more cool things. Oh, here's another one. Here's evidence that our thistle was growing last year might still have some seed fluff in it. So there's the head. Oh yeah, so there's some seeds really tiny right at the bottom of that fluff. Pretty small. There's one right there. Oh, there it goes in the wind. The birds love to use this plant too because they can use that in their nest to keep the eggs nice and uh, warm and safe. That's pretty cool. All right, let's head back to our chart. We've seen lots of stuff living and growing and using the prairie. See if you can think about other things that might need it. Um, and we're going to get back to our vocab words and I'll give you your question to end the activity. Alright, so remember some of our big vocab words that we learned. Biodiversity, that just means lots of life, right? Diversity is lots of kinds and bio is life. So it just means lots of life and that's really important. Insect, that's one of those animals that's got six legs, right? And invertebrate. What doesn't an invertebrate have? No backbone. Very, very cool. Here's our questions to wrap up the activity. What is an invertebrate? We just answered it for you, okay? But what makes it different than an insect and an arachnid? How are those two different, okay? And finally, what do you think after our searching through the prairie? Do you think it is a really good habitat for invertebrates? Is it good for other animals? I think we saw signs that it was. Very cool, guys. Explore your own area. Look up more about the prairie and its biodiversity and enjoy the activity. We'll be back with another one.